The newton raphson method is an iterative numerical method for finding approximate solutions to equations of the form f of x equals zero. It is useful because it often converges very quickly, requiring only a few iterations to find an answer that is correct to many decimal places. We will illustrate this by finding a solution to the equation x squared minus 2 equals 0, which of course has solutions where x is plus or minus the square root of 2. We will then look at the general formula for this method, and finally we will examine the pros and cons of the method. The newton raphson method requires us to supply an initial estimate of the x value where the curve crosses the x-axis. This estimate doesn't need to be very accurate, but it is helpful if it is on the part of the curve that slopes towards the correct value. In this example, we will use x equals 2. Let's zoom in on the graph to look at the region of interest. We draw a vertical line with the formula x equals 2, which meets the curve at point A1. This point is 2, 2. We then draw a tangent to the curve at point A1. This tangent crosses the x-axis at 1.50, which we will call B1. We will see later how the value 1.5 was calculated. The point of intersection 1.5 gives us our next guess for the value of x. Now we repeat the process, zooming in on the new region of interest. We draw a vertical line at the position where the previous line crossed the x-axis, which was 1.5. This crosses the curve at point A2. This point is 1.5, 0 0.25. Once again we draw a tangent to the curve. Notice that this time the tangent is very close to the function itself. This time the tangent crosses the x-axis at 1.416 recurring, the point B2. This value will be our next approximation for x. Since the value of the square root of 2 is approximately 1.4142, this value is already accurate to about two decimal places. We can iterate over and over, using the previous approximate value of x to calculate a new approximation, on each iteration we zoom in on a smaller and smaller section of the curve. As we zoom in more, the section of the curve looks more and more like a straight line, so the approximation gets more and more accurate. This method often converges on the correct value very quickly. So far we have drawn diagrams to illustrate what is happening. But in fact we can calculate the next value of x. We don't need to draw it and measure it. This graph shows some function f of x. It happens to be x squared minus 2, but it could be any smooth function. Our current approximation to the solution is x0. Point a is at x0, f of x0, the point on the curve where x equals x0. If we draw a tangent at a, it hits the x-axis at the point b, where x equals x1 x is our next approximation to the solution, b is at x10. We also mark the point c at x00 on the x-axis directly below a. Our approach will be to calculate the slope of the line ab to find x1. The slope of the line is length ca divided by the length cb. Now the y value of a is f of x0, and the y value of c is 0. Since the line is vertical, the length ca is simply f of x0. Also, the x value of c is x0, and the x value of b is x1. Since this line is horizontal, the length cb is x0 minus x1. So the slope of the line, ca over cb, is f of x0 divided by x0 minus x1. 
But there is a second way to calculate the slope at a, which is the first derivative of the function f, which we will write as f prime. Since x is equal to x0 at point a, the slope at that point is f prime of x0. We now have two ways to calculate the slope at point a. Since they both calculate the same value, we can set them equal. This gives us f of x0 over x0 minus 1 equals f prime of x0. This can be solved for x1. See the article linked below for a step-by-step -step derivation. We now know how to calculate x1, the next value of x, in terms of the known quantities x0, f of x0, and f prime of x0. Let's apply this to the specific function x squared minus 2. We need to find the first derivative of this function. If we differentiate x squared, the result is 2x from the x to the power n rule. If we differentiate minus 2, the result is 0, because the derivative of any constant term is 0. So the derivative of the function x squared minus 2 is 2x. Here is the equation we derived earlier to find the next value x1 from the value of the function and its derivative at x0. We can apply this to the function x squared minus 2 and its derivative 2x. We can expand the numerator. Cancelling terms gives us this. Finally, we can combine the terms in x0. This equation can be used as a recurrence relation, allowing us to find the next value x next from the current value x. This allows us to calculate a sequence of values that converge on the true value. Starting with the next value of 2, we plug the value into the equation. 2 over 2 plus 1 over 2 is 1.5, which is our next approximation for x. This is the value that we used when we plotted the graph, but now we know how to calculate the value. We repeat the calculation with a new value for x. 1.5 over 2 plus 1 over 1.5 gives 1.416 recurring. We used this value previously as well. It is correct to two decimal places. We repeat the calculation with a value of 1.416 recurring. This gives a new value. This value is correct to about five decimal places. Repeating again gives another value, this time correct to 11 places. After the fifth iteration, the value is correct to about 15 decimal places, which is about as precise as most computer programs or pocket calculators. For comparison, if we had used interval by section to calculate the result, it would have taken about 50 iterations. The newton raphson method has one main advantage over other methods. It converges very quickly. It often only takes a few iterations to reach a precision of 15 decimal places, which is close enough for most purposes. There are some disadvantages though. First is that we need to calculate the derivative of the function to derive the recurrence formula. The second disadvantage is that the method can sometimes be unpredictable. If an equation has more than one solution, a particular starting point might converge on an unexpected route. In some cases it might not converge at all. However, these problems can usually be fixed fairly easily by selecting a different initial value. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe or visit graphicmaths.com. The link is in the description below.